Thanks for looking at this vision from Contour 556. It's Canberra's Biennial of Public Art. And we've got 60 artists here for three weeks, four weekends, in the wonderful landscape in Canberra, where the artists are engaging with the landscape, they're engaging with the design of Canberra, the history of Canberra, uh, which could be social, could be political, could be geographical. There's a whole range of artists from Australia, from, uh, from New Zealand, from Hong Kong, regional artists, local artists, and producing works that are, that, that are temporary, they're ephemeral. We're looking at the way that the artifacts intersect the access by placing an artwork on the access, interrupting our view. Artists are, are placing works in the water to, um, again, to sort of make us look into the water depth, so rather than looking across it. I'm really interested in how text and language is read when it's on the body and off the body and what that sort of does, um, how the context changes the meaning. So this particular work uh, is quite interesting because you're, you're literally giving someone a label or a name tag. The work here is a, a, a dispenser of such and it's an interesting play on, you know, when you forget someone's name at an opening or at an event you call them mate, uh, but mate's also a very loaded word. I chose this work for this particular space, sort of out of the body of work that I've been working on, um, because it has a slightly more, I guess, political edge. I mean, initially it's quite funny and humorous, uh, but I think if you think about the word a little more or in the realms of sort of political nature, mate starts to be maybe a little off-putting because it's, it's a little more distant. I think it's really interesting to have political works or more performative works in the space of Contour 556 uh, because you know you can engage in a slightly wider audience if you're out and about um, and there's there's lots of people down around the lake that aren't necessarily always engaged in art and being able to engage them you know by literally labeling them with something is quite an interesting thing that they then take out into the world and start engaging with or having conversations with people who are outside the realm of, of, of standard art fair. What I've tried to do is take the experience of ideas and phrases popping into your head via the titles of books on a bookshelf, sort of as your eyes just inadvertently pick up some words across the room, just walking with that briefly. But obviously this is a much more sort of, produces a much more self-conscious experience because it, it's an art intervention installation and make that part of the experience of walking down to the lake by putting these giant versions of books on some of the concrete. I thought a lot about what the words should be in this space and how this is just a normal kind of place where people exercise and hang out as they're walking around but also that it is um, in the federal parliament kind of space, which is that sort of other identity of Canberra. So some of them have sort of political resonance. I think people have uh, been pleasantly surprised by it. Um, yeah, the people have come past and talked to me while I was installing it. Each one of the books seems to be occupying this weird space where it's sort of like protruding and not protruding, or it's like half buried in the ground. I have, uh, uh, I have two works in this exhibition. The two works are radically different on surface, but in fact they're you know, uh, very related. It's about uh, really spatial engagement. Um, the one work is called Breach and it's the rope work that's suspended from the roadway carriageways. Um, and the other is uh, Reach, which is a series of rubber gloves that are floating at various depths at various parts of the lake. Now, where the two works relate is essentially how site-sensitive they are. Um, they're both animated by the conditions. Both works pick up um, the anxieties and the calm of the situation or the moment. Uh, so uh, the rope work is animated by um, wind and gravity, I suppose, so the ropes take on they're never the same, they're kinetic works in some sense, they're kinetically sensitive and likewise in the water uh, the gloves too are animated by light, wind, um, current, the water effect on the surface so uh, they're works that again are never 
um, the same at any given time. I call it drawing installations, um, sometimes in the gallery, but usually outside, uh, on the hill, in the public, up in the park. Uh, so whatever uh, people pass by, I love to make uh, some artwork uh, to engage with it. It is a physical exploration of uh, mark making of a scribble drawing. Just imagine you, you make a scribble drawing but on the landscape. It's the sky, the lawn, the hill, and the uh, lake. They are all your paper to draw on. So um, the line and the, the people pass by, the space, everything is a complex uh, a relationship it creates. So um, I guess it is a, just a simple line, but people can um, go through it and they can relate to it and also um, the background of the sky and the lake is the scribble drawing beautifully tumbling down to the lake. That's how it works. Himori is uh, uh, the, one of the name of a Korean rhythm which is a fast rhythm. So similar to salsa but it's a unique uh, Korean rhythm but it's, it's just not really little scribble drawing. So imagine swimming, you sweep your arm, scribble drawing, like a, I feel like a fast rhythm. Canberra has always been full of errors. I mean, we have a great country, sometimes we have a great government, but there have been decisions made over time which have huge consequences and which need to be corrected. So I hope that Canberra will um, have a gigantic uh, positive effect upon the entire Australian political landscape. So we've managed to find a spot to do what would have to be the biggest graffiti ever done in Canberra. People walking by stand there and look and think. Um, there was a group of people doing that yesterday. I walked by and just yelled out mistakes to the federal government. And they went, yeah, all right. So I think it makes sense on a simple level like that. But. Um, uh, I don't like to tie things down too much. Image is everything. Um, what remains are the photographs, and so hopefully they will have a bit more uh, circulation. I mean, with temporary art, you need to be there to see it, but the documentation becomes the work itself. The concept of a public art biennale is perfect for me because it's about what is the public? Like, what is, who is the public? and how did the public interact with these things? I mean, I'm a public in different senses. Sometimes I'm the public, sometimes I'm the artist. These works are a way of me trying to negotiate how I look at art. Instead of just being a kind of traditional gallery space, you've got the hallway that leads to the toilets where I can stick the banister rail from the Guggenheim. And that means that it's slightly out of context. People aren't quite sure how to approach it. So these things, I don't know, they, they're kind of strange little, um, emissaries or something reaching out. The fantastic nature of art is that anybody can bring any idea um, and read different things out of the artwork. So by having these different concepts and the the way that different people can read into them uh, is what I'm really interested in. So Flooded is a work that is based around the idea of um, previous colonial development of Canberra. So uh, the work with the tide line um, or watermark across the work um, looks at Lake Belly Griffin and its environmental health um, as well as bringing in ideas of, of drought. The opening of the Henry Rowland Park and this new site um, for the jetty was spectacular to coincide with Contour. The work is sitting on the water access mark um, that was designated by Walter Belly Griffin. With that space being aligned with that watermark and those water lines, and then my work having that title mark on it as well, I think really situates it into that space. 